I'm just curious, how many people are here for the first time on a Holy Saturday evening? The first time ever coming to a Holy Saturday? A few? Just a few? Very nice. Well, welcome. Welcome, especially. Especially. This night is the granddaddy of them all, or the grandmommy, however you want to say it. This is, this is, this is kind of meant to be an all-night thing. Um, some parishes, some of my friends over the years uh, would really stretch out these readings. We didn't read them all. There's at least seven, and then the ones for the Mass. Um, and, and they're beautiful. They're beautiful. But it's long, and, and people can endure just so much, I think. But it's a long service. But this is the heart of our year. This is the most important day uh, of the entire church year, I think. And in it, we do a few things. We light the fire, the light. We welcome the light into our lives. Now, I know many of you bought candles, and when you leave, uh, if you turn some in, we collect them just so that it does a little less damage than possible here. But we want you to take them home, and hopefully as you go in the house, you'll light that light again and welcome Christ the light into your home. Just as here in prayer, we welcome Christ the light into our hearts. Because when that light comes in, we don't walk in darkness. When we automatically think of the things that Jesus has said and done in his life, and we make them our own, we're walking in the light. And that's why we light this fire and light the light and carry the light and and come into the darkness of the church with, with our own light, united with the light of one another. It's a very important symbol, but also a very important reality. Also, we listen to these stories. I want to tell you a story. This actually happened, and, and it's one of my favorite stories from my dad. Uh, my mother was the sweetest person on earth. Mary was her name, and she just was... She was sweet and kind and just never a crossword. She just was amazing. But my dad, he was a joker and he was funny and he played and be serious and when he wasn't serious. And my cousins just loved when he came back to Kansas. And they, they would do things like he'd play pinnacle at night with my aunts and uncles and they'd get on either side of him with a back of, of corn chips and they'd go right up to his ear here and go <coughs> and chew the chip in his ear. And then the one on this side would do the same thing. And my dad never flinched, never looked like he didn't even know what was happening. And they would giggle, and they, would, they, would just, they, they just were like under his power. But he is this one thing that I particularly like, and, and all my friends know this story, and whenever I tell it, they, they still laugh, because they knew my dad. But they go out to the farm where my mother grew up, and her brother and sister-in-law and their nine children um, ran the farm after my grandma and grandpa died. And so every year when uh, he'd go back there, he would drive up to the farm, and um, my, uh, my aunt and uncle would say, Uncle Eddie and Aunt Mary are coming. So the kids would get out there, and they'd be so excited. They'd be waiting for him. They'd see his car in there. Uncle Eddie, Uncle Eddie. And when he'd drive up, he'd say this, I think I'm lost. Can anyone tell me where Eddie and Mary Vogel live? And they'd say, it's here, Uncle Eddie, it's here, Uncle Eddie. And he said, well, I think I'm lost. So he would drive around the house because there was dirt everywhere. It was out on a farm. And they would run after the car. He'd drive like two miles an hour. And they're running after the car. No, Uncle Eddie, Uncle Eddie. And then he'd stop again and say, I, I, I think I'm lost. I just don't know where the, uh, Eddie and Mary are. And then he'd drive off again. There's your Uncle Eddie. He did it every single year he went back there. And they laughed and loved it every single time. That's our scriptures. We tell these old stories. How many times do you think that creation story has been heard in your life? How many times have you heard that story of Abraham ready to kill his son, his only son, out of obedience to God and believing that that was what he had to do. And he did it without question. How many times have we heard of the chariots and the charioteers going through the Red Sea and dying because God opened, opened the, the, 
the, the, the water and dried the land so the Israelites could pass and then closed it on them just so he could save his people. And these stories are the guts, the guts of our Jewish and Christian faith. We tell them again and again, especially on this night. And the reason, especially on this night, and unfortunately it's the first year in, in all my years of preacher, I think, that we haven't had people to baptize on this night because of the pandemic. It just prevented us from getting people. But this is the night that these who are about to be baptized would hear the stories of our faith, the stories of our faith. And this is what they were welcomed into. In just a few moments, we'll bless the water. Uh, we won't have any baptisms tonight, but we'll bless the water of the font and the water up here that you will be used to sprinkle all of us as we remember our promises of faith and renew them again tonight. And then, finally, we end in a Eucharistic celebration. This is what this night's about. This is our core. This is our guts. This is the beginning. But I tell you tonight, I, I don't know about you, and uh, I can't get tired of saying it, but I, I wonder what the people around Ukraine, Poland, all of those countries are feeling tonight. What, what they heard in these stories. I wonder how much they compared Russia, or at least Putin, to uh, Pharaoh and Egypt. Um, ugly times, dark times, terrible times. And so, at least in all of my life, more than any time in my life, these readings tonight just scream out in power to us and tell us that we need this God more than ever, more than ever, to dispel the darkness and bring the light. Entonces estamos celebrando esta noche para recibir muchas cosas, la luz de Cristo, la palabra de Dios que puede penetrar no solamente en nuestras mentes, pero corazones, porque cuando la, la palabra como una semilla está planteada adentro, aquí, y cuando escuchamos podemos conectar con Dios, Dios no está solamente salvando a la gente en el tiempo de, de Faraó, pero ahorita también. Él quiere que nosotros podemos cruzar el río, el mar, en tierra que está seco. Es un símbolo, pero es una realidad. Entonces, cuando estamos en este, este mar y, y pensamos que no vamos a vivir, tenemos que buscar a Dios que dice, yo voy a salvarlo. Y entonces esa historia es invítanos a conocer este poder de Dios en nuestras vidas y su poder a salvarnos y, y darnos paz y, y vida. Pero más que nunca cuando buscamos este cruz, porque esta noche estamos celebrando no que es en la cruz, está en la tumba. Pero en esta celebración que Él resucitó. Una cosa chiquita pero muy bonita, especialmente en San Lucas. Y, y la iglesia le gusta decir, los primeros, los primeros que estaban en la tumba eran quién? ¿Los apóstoles? Mm -mm. Las mujeres. Las mujeres. Entonces, los primeros, los primeros a anunciar la resurrección de Jesús no eran los apóstoles, pero las mujeres. Y ellos anunciaron a los apóstoles que él no estaba en la tumba y que esos dos varones dijeron que él estaba resucitado. Entonces, yo creo que la liturgia, la palabra, los uh, detallitos eh, tienen muchas cosas para instruirnos y guiar nuestras vidas de fe. Y yo creo que en esta celebración estamos invitados a, a, a recibir adentro todo el impacto de esta liturgia que puede renovar nuestras vidas. Entonces, esta parte que siguen es muy importante porque vamos a, a bendecir el agua del puente allá y también esta agua que vamos a poner sobre nosotros pero antes que vamos a recibir este agua, vamos a renovar nuestros compromisos de bautismo. Y tenemos la oportunidad, como siempre, pero especialmente en esta noche, a renunciar al pecado y profesar nuestra fe en Dios. Y si podemos hacer eso humildemente y sinceramente, hay poder aquí esta noche.
y vamos a recibir la gracia que solo Dios quiere darnos. Entonces, Y te, por favor. <tose>